guys, Kim here, and you are tuned back into my channel, Kim E, the Diabetes MP. And today we're going to continue working our way through the management treatment of a person who has diabetes. Today we are going to talk about metformin and the things that you need to know about metformin, okay? Okay, guys, before we get into it, I want to just say something that will be the theme going forward in all of my videos, okay? Um, this platform, when I started this platform, I am assuming that we're all colleagues. I'm assuming that we're all nurse practitioners or we're nurse practitioner students and that we're all coming in with an understanding and a knowledge of diabetes. And the reason why I'm saying this is because all of my videos, this video included and moving forward, none of these videos are going to be a deep lecture, a deep dive le lecture. I'm assuming that we're all coming in understanding what metformin is. And really what I want to do is give you all quick main points, high level points of things to remember and things that you can use and concise things that you can use in your practice. So as we're moving through, you're going to notice that I'm not going to do a review of patho. I'm not going to go into deeply into the mechanism of action when it comes to all of the medicines because I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that we already know that. And if you don't know that, um, or let's say you're a student and you're just now getting into learning the medications, I am going to challenge you to go and look that stuff up uh, for yourself. But this is going to be more of your high level quick tips that you can use okay so i do want it i did want to say that because you're going to notice as we're talking about metformin today that i'm not going to go into like dosage and how to prescribe it and stuff it's going to be that quick stuff so wanted to say that to lay the foundation okay metformin let's start at just an overview of what metformin is now, the drug class that metformin is a part of, it's called the biguanide. Now, in the U.S., metformin is the only drug that you will see in that class in our country, okay? It's the only one that we use here in the U.S. of A., and the drug class is the biguanide. Now, I do want to kind of briefly go over how this medication works and where it would be beneficial for your patient. So it has a primary and it has a secondary usage, okay? The primary thing that it does in our patients is it decreases the hepatic glucose production, okay? So we know that to be um, gluconeogenesis. So all the new glucose molecules that are made by the liver, it decreases that, okay? It puts a kibosh on that. Now, the second thing that it does, it also improves the peripheral um, insulin sensitivity in your skeletal tissues. So it allows the insulin to be registered by your by your tissues, your skeletal tissues, and to be able to be utilized more more frequently. Okay, so put that together, it decreases your glucose production, and it also allows insulin to be registered more. So that is how it helps the person that is diabetic. Okay, something else that you would need to know about this is that it the ideal candidate for metformin is the person that is obese. The person who has dyslipidemia, like cholesterol issues. Also, somebody who has clearly uh, elevated fasting um, glucose. And then also somebody who is possibly insulin resistant. Okay, so that's where metformin really works. Keep in mind, decreases hepatic glucose production, increases insulin sensitivity. Okay. So something that you need to keep in mind when it comes to metformin is that that person still needs to be producing insulin. Um, they still need to be producing and having that endogenous insulin circulating for metformin to be effective. So if you, after 
doing your care and your treatment, you realize that this person's insulin, this insulin is probably insulin, uh, that they are not producing insulin, metformin is not going to work on them, okay? And um, so keep that in mind, okay? And then also, clearly we know this is the first medicine that you would start someone on that is um, a diabetic. And it is also indicated in people who are pre-diabetic. And to be honest with you, when I see this in practice and when I would use this in somebody who is pre-diabetic, this is the person that has high risk, okay? This is a person that is likely to develop diabetes. You can go ahead and you can start them on pre-diabetes. You'll still be safe. Okay, and that is the overview. Just wanting to give you guys a quick little overview of some things to keep in mind as we move forward. All right, some of the big side effects that we need to keep in mind. Now, side effects that we need to keep in mind and side effects that we need to educate our patients on because if they are put on this medicine and they start experiencing some of these side effects, What's going to happen, guys? Our patients are going to stop taking it. So we need to let them know up front that this could possibly happen. It's not guaranteed. But if you start to experience these things, this is the reason why. Okay? And there's two big ones. Okay? The GI upset and the metallic taste in their mouth. Okay? So let's talk a little bit about the GI upset. Now, typically, you see this at the higher doses. Okay, um, it is always recommended that you start low and you go slow. Okay, I, I remember hearing that when I was in undergrad nursing, but that's really true for any medicine. But especially with this, you want to titrate them up to the dosage that you need to get them to. And then also let your patient know that it's kind of like a self-limiting, transient, temporary type of side effect that after about a week or two, they probably won't be having these side effects anymore. So if they could just get past that 14 days, then they should be fine, okay? Now, because of this, you do want to educate them on taking this medicine with food because that'll minimize that GI, uh, those GI effects and that upset, okay? Now, with the metallic taste, you probably won't see too many people having this, but it is a possibility. The GI upset is probably gonna come before the metallic taste, but it's also a good thing to let them know that they could experience this. And again, taking this medication with food would definitely help that as well. Okay, so let's talk about some precautions and contraindications. Um, many of us know that metformin is not recommended for somebody who has a GFR less than 30. Okay, so we're really wanting to monitor that kidney um, level, and here's the reason why. Metformin is eliminated mainly through the urine, so our kidneys need to be functioning well enough and filtering that medication out, otherwise we're going to get an accumulation of metformin. And it's also not recommended that you initiate metformin with anybody who has a GFR between 30 and 45. You really need to be cautious when starting metformin, even in the patient there, but definitely not in a person who has a GFR less than 30, okay? also something to consider is if you're dealing with a patient that's like 80 years of age or older doing a 24-hour creatinine clearance on them to test that kidney function because as we know like I just mentioned with metformin coming out through the urine we have to make sure that renal function is good okay here's another thing that we need to keep in mind lactic acidosis okay uh, so here's the reason why the metabolism of lactate happens in the liver so if you have uh, a liver that has some dysfunction hepatic dysfunction we need to know that because that will accumulate and that means that metformin is going to accumulate okay and keeping in mind that metformin works on the liver that's its primary function is it works on the liver and it decreases the glucose production we need to make sure that our liver is working well as as well and if it's not that's where we get into that trouble with the lactic acidosis okay okay 
and overall guys anything that would predispose your patient to like a acute renal dysfunction or hypoperfusion or anything like that you need to temporarily hold that metformin okay so here's some examples of when you would need to do it we know that a patient that's having a test that in that involves iv contrast stop the metformin okay you stop it that day and a couple of days later you can restart it when the kidney function returns um consider mis okay myocardial infarctions um exacerbations with congestive heart failure exacerbations with copd um these are things that would predispose a patient to, with decrease renal function or hypoperfusion um, because the body is working towards whatever system is in that shock and it will cause issues with the metformin. So what you'll do is temporarily hold it and then restart it when the person gets back to where the renal function has returned, okay? All right, guys, I hope this was a very helpful video and I hope for the person who already knew this stuff that this was kind of like a refresher for them okay I think sometimes as providers we can get into a habit of doing things and we forget why we're doing what we're doing and so I wanted to provide the why behind why we do certain things when it comes to managing patients on metformin Again, you've been sitting here with Kim E, the Diabetes NP, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.